Oh, why I got Woo. Okay, Terry. Um, ah, let's take a deep breath in. <sighs> Breathe. <sighs> Hold. <sighs> Release. <laughs> Release, yeah, because I'm like, oh my gosh, we got to go down the street and get this, take the math portion of the GED today for my son. So I'm really oh, excited. Okay. For him. Um, oh. What I really was uh, thinking about this morning, or I was having some issues. I went to a wonderful retreat this weekend. It was beautiful. And then I came home and I was just a little bit blah as the time went on. And I was able to talk to my sweetheart and, you know, he gave me a lot of encouragement and I was wondering sometimes, well, we know this, right? That sometimes when things are good, we just want to find, maybe find something to, I don't know how you say it. You, you need to find something wrong. You got to, because we're so used to being in extreme highs and extreme lows that when we're actually regulated and feeling normal, that we don't really like that. They actually referenced that in the Matrix that humans didn't like it when they built the Matrix and they were happy. They were like, no, something's supposed to happen. And I didn't even relate it to this other thing that we were discussing. If you can close your mic for just a second. And I didn't equate it to this other thing that we were discussing because I was just thinking on my level how I just felt just kind of blah when everything was great. I just had this fabulous weekend. I'm home. It's peaceful. I'm not starving. I'm not hungry. You know, I'm, you know, things are good. And it it goes into this this deep desire that humans have for drama or chaos but it, you know, we, and so now we're dealing with tomorrow is Wednesday. It's the day for the broadcast. Oh my God. Because people are constantly predicting. I was started to look at apocalypse predictions. It went so far back. It actually was back like, let's see, the year 60 CE. Now, I know about the year 1918, but I didn't know there's like there's like over 100 dates where people were like, this is it. It's over. It's coming to an end. Charles Taze, you know, founder of the Jehovah's Witness, he had a couple of dates, 1914. Then it was 1918. Then um, they even discussed 2020, not 2020, 2012. Let's see, what was supposed to happen in 2012, 2008, 2011, 2011, 2012. A cult leader predicted that the world's government and economies would fail on this date and that he and his followers would undergo a transformation that would make them fly and walk through walls. That was Jose Luis de Jesus. That was 2012. Someone else had their own prediction about Nibiru and the Mayan history and NASA 2013. Um, so this broadcast system signal was also something done in 2020. Remember? And they said, buy your food and da da da. We thought, oh, we're going to sit down and we're going to see the truth and this is going to happen. And so now that same broadcast system signal that happens every year has been repurposed. And this year, it's they're going to set off the EMF frequencies or the frequencies inside your phone, put it in a Faraday case and blah, blah, blah. And now um, this is when people are going to be triggered who had the shot that all the black goo is going to be triggered. But I do appreciate what Brad Olson said, because he said, we all have black goo. So the issue that you have is trying to detox and we do need to spend less time with our electronics. It's funny because the same way that we have the predictions about all the electronics and the devices, we don't stay off of them. I believe it's the man from Microsoft and he says he doesn't even have Wi-Fi in his house 
But then I thought, I was like, oh my God, if I took Wi-Fi out of my house, <laughs> like what would I do? So there was um, also some flooding in New York and it was just some things I wanted to share on my screen. So, okay. Before I do the one with the flooding in New York, I wanted to go through some pictures because I was also in D.C. And in D.C., this is 2022 in D.C., but this is, um, okay, so this is 2022 in D.C. So let me go to the actual pictures. Well, I was in D.C., the same thing happened in 2019. This is, this one's 20. This DC 2019. This is New York. This is 2023. This is now. This is Orlando, Florida in 2019. And this is when I was in DC in 2019. And inside our hotel was like this. Now, when I was there experiencing it, I didn't feel like it was the end of the world or anything. What I remembered was that when I was coming to this area, there was a lot of empty buildings and that they weren't the real there was so much property for sale. So when this flood happened, I thought, oh my God, no wonder all the property is for sale and all these office buildings were empty, is because they know that this happens. So a young lady made a video and she actually explained the reason why these things were happening in New York. And so I wanted to share that. It's like a minute and 26 seconds. So you know how flooding in New York City seems to get worse every year. And the areas that flood don't really make sense because they're not as close to the river as other places that don't flood. Well, that is because New York City was essentially built over streams, swamps, and other waterways, like this creek, which is apparently buried beneath Astoria and Long Island City. Indigenous tribes who lived in what became known as New York City basically utilized natural resources rather than trying to change them, so they would build their homes along waterways. But colonizers essentially said, yeah, we're going to do things differently. This 1874 map of Manhattan shows you just how much water is beneath our city. Alphabet City and Thompson Square Park, that was essentially a swamp. And today, it's a flood zone. And remember the video of Dykeman Street flooding? Look at just how many waterways that area was built over. And then this video of the one train flooding at 28th Street, yep, that was an entire stream. And don't even get me started about this, like, cesspool at the 157th Street station. That was two streams. New York City was literally built on water, and water has to go somewhere. A biologist once said, if you build your home on wetlands, you will have a hobby for the rest of your life because you will forever be fighting water. Add to that climate change and the fact that New York City's heavy buildings are literally causing the city to sink. Oh, yes, we are also sinking. So that said, we are definitely going to be dealing with flooding that is going to get worse basically the rest of our lives. So I'm going to stop the sharing. But this takes me back to what Alexis Rose and what Ursula had discussed about staying near water, how a bit, like how waters are going to rise. It's not that it, it's going to rise that we're dealing with. The problem is you know, when you don't respect nature and you want to do it your way, like build tunnels in a place where the river is right there and you want to build these tunnels. And now we're stuck with these structures that have basically disobeyed the laws of nature. Like we're not obeying the laws of nature. We're doing things kind of in an out of order spot. And so we can see how it causes damage, but every year people equate this to, oh my God, you know, they want to assign a special meaning to it. I um, went to Egypt in 2022 and in, in 2023, someone showed a video of a sandstorm. And I was thinking, do you not know, like, that's pretty much what that region is known for, sandstorms. It only rains one week out of the year. 
can you imagine living somewhere where it only rains one week out of the year? But so it's extremely dry. It's the desert. And when it has those sandstorms, that's normal. But other people watching the video are like, oh my God, this is a sign that the gods are angry. And people were writing these kinds of comments because they want to equate some larger meaning to what's happening around us outside of nature. And it really is just that we've been so focused inward, like that we don't even notice the pattern of the emergency broadcast system every year that they've been doing this for however long. We don't notice that it floods every year in D.C. We don't notice. And so as soon as we um, get a whiff of it, then we try to equate a lot of extra meaning to it. Um, I'm going to let Terry speak about that, but, you know, maybe there are some warnings in there, but just basically how the warnings will get lost because there's so many alerts that, or predictions that nothing happens, nothing happens. And so we forget, we stop listening completely because we're inundated with all these stories and you don't know what you should listen to. Um, I know in 2020, after a lot of things happened, I stopped listening to a lot of shows because people were selling buckets of food and freaking people out. And and look, nothing happened. <laughs> we still got what most of us think is the wrong president. <laughs> they've gotten away with cheating for it's three years now that they've gotten away with cheating. And um what do we do though with our daily lives? Because it's almost as if we crave these types of dramas in the first place, because we'd rather hold on to the story of this amazing, unexplainable thing is going to happen. It's going to be traumatic rather than holding on to the peace that we carry on our daily lives. It's just by nature, something that we do. And Terry, I don't know if you had something you wanted to add to that, because I think you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just want to add to the fact that when you were talking about uh, cities being built on on swamplands and everything, we see this all the time. And it's not only big cities, it's even rural areas. People want to live on the river. They live on the river. The river floods all the time and they're going to end up having they live on a floodplain you're going to expect to be flooded and mother nature nature has a way of uh, is very powerful and you know then you have this faction saying oh it's all because of climate change no it's because people are not respecting the natural flow of the of the water of the rivers of the of the earth, how things are. So, you know, build your house on high ground. Make sure you have a good foundation. If you're going to build it on sand, it's not going to last. So I think those are those are things that we also have to equate in our life is what are the foundations that we're building this stuff on? And it's, yeah, you know, people will have what's the color what's the flavor of the of the day you know somebody standing up and saying oh there's going to be this emergency broadcast or oh the world is going to end on the 23rd of september because all these dates are are everywhere and so we we get so um pulled into it that when it doesn't happen there's it's it's, it's anticlimactic and then i think what happens is then we become desensitized to a lot of information that is actually um appropriate so yeah yeah it, it honestly makes me wonder if you know people are calling certain groups of society sheep because as soon as an emergency comes they react by what dosing themselves Yet, on the opposite end of the spectrum, you're the wise one, you're the woke, you're the conscious. But then every time someone mentions emergency broadcasts or act in nature, it's like 
you know, get out your go bag. And it's like, it's as if I've always believed there's a left and the right. You guys are going to hear me say this so many times and that there's people chosen to lead on the left and people chosen to lead on the right. That's with our government. And then that's with government versus anti-government. People who are anti-government are just as susceptible to this chaos. And I do believe there's people appointed to anyone who's in the spiritual community. There are people appointed and put here. People who are put in the UFO community, in the truther community, in the Trumper community, in the disclosure community. There's people placed in each area that are here as powder kegs to blow things up and make things happen to lead you all to chaos. Because if you know that the system is so built around order out of chaos, then you have to know that there is no true escape from it, that there's there's beings put in each category that relate to you, look like you, act like you, and they're put there to help drive the drama because there's loose like even though you're away from politics there's still loose in spirituality there's still loose in ufo communities there's still loose in trumpers and because there's still a lot of anger a lot of bitterness a lot of jealousy a lot of rage a lot of outrage being promoted in each area so That's why I'm always saying, take a step back and figure out what are people campaigning about? Are they campaigning about extreme positivity or extreme separation? Because that's going to tell you to take 10 steps back from what you're doing to understand that maybe there's something going on underneath the surface and it's not exactly what is being spread to me. And I'm not even saying that people are doing this willfully. There's some deep, when you're programmed, there's a certain level of understanding of, I need to deprogram. But the programming is so layered and so deep that there's parts of your program that live in opposition. So where you're saying, I'm... I'm deprogramming myself. I'm stepping away from the system. But there's these layers of beliefs that you have that are built on programs that you haven't even tapped into. So there is no point at which you're like, I have fully made it. Because you're still going to be growing and looking deeper inside yourself to find self-limiting beliefs, triggers, anxieties. Um, little programs that trigger you to respond a certain way that you've been trained to respond for so long that you cannot walk away just saying, I got it. You have to keep looking and seeing who is triggering you. Why are they triggering you? What are they promoting? What are they selling? Because people are selling stuff constantly, whether they know it or not, even if they think they're helping. So I think we pretty much covered it, Terry. And if anything else you have. Yeah, I, I'm just going to say that they add, we have an election here in the province I live in, in Canada. And I was just reading from somebody's um, campaign here. And, and you know, we, we hear about like the smart cities and everything and those 15 minute cities. And People don't know what it's about, but I've got somebody here saying working to provide funding for businesses, industries and institutions to identify pathways to decarbonization. Uh, Yeah, as well as fund innovative projects to help protect the environment and create a greener province. You know, here's somebody, here's a politician who's already bought into the program. And does he realize what program he's bought into? You know, he's a young man thinking that he's following, you know, going to help the community. But but they're they're people are led into a belief system thinking that it's for the good. And maybe it's it's there's agendas. There's always agendas and more agendas. And and I think for us to be able to step back and look and just see 
does this make sense? Does this make sense for me? You know, like everybody, you know, people will be there trying to promote something and, you know, 90% of it is the truth. Part of it isn't. Um, so that's where you get those whole idea of this conspiracy theories. You know, most of it's truth, but then there's, there's something added to it. Um, and, and it can be added in two different ways. We have to be more discerning in the way that we approach things and see things and stop and, and question more. And that's it. That's what I have to say. And then we're going to pull some cards. We're going to pull a card today. And do I some collective reading. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I, 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 a card dropped off and I'm going to um, pull another one. And I'm pulling today from the Priestess of Light. So the first card that fell out was Hostilities. <laughs> Conflict and unrest. Well, gosh, I don't think I think that's very self-explanatory. I don't think we need to say much. Um, and then the other card is it came as the Divine Mother, nurturing compassion and grace. So I think with with this we have yes, there's a lot in that undercurrent, and maybe it's about us finding. The grace that's there and connecting to that aspect of the divinity, the feminine, about that nurturing and seeing it for perhaps all of this chaos is meant to bring the stuff to the surface that isn't serving us as humanity anymore. And there's no one person who's going to be a savior. And, you know, for all those people who are looking for for the, I don't know, the Federation to come down from the sky and save us, it's not going to happen. We have to save ourselves from, from within. And that means connecting to our source and not following and listening to all of the stuff, all of the propaganda that's there and recognizing propaganda for what it is. I don't know, Erica, do you have anything you want to say to that? <sighs> first card it flew out this is the card the hostilities was the one that flew out it's uh, conflict and unrest which is where we are right yep and we're right after a full moon and they and both got moons on it. it yeah we're both coming we're coming out of a full moon sequence and it's pulling out a lot pull, pulling out a lot of energy from people a lot of emotions and so sometimes we have these emotions are misplaced and we have to find a proper place for all of these emotions and definitely taking them out of hostility and distress and fear and anxiety and putting them in a place of peace and so actually you know coming out of that part of yourself that is needy and maybe wanting um, to be nurtured. And if you can have a partner or a friend that helps you nurture and find that place, that's good. But definitely it's something that you always have to be mindful to try to do for yourself. And I found myself taking lots of deep breaths and holding and what, you know, just processing not being reactive to where I had to go pick up the phone and call somebody to fix it for me, but just to be at peace and observing myself and then being gentle with myself. Like just because that's happening, it doesn't mean that you're a loser. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong. And some of us, we feel like we're weak because we cry or we are, um, Maybe weak because we shared Ted share shed, shed tears and emotions, but there is strength in silence. You know, people think there's a lot of strength in being loud and fighting and being rude, but there's even more strength in the person that can find peace and bring their energies together and deal with themselves on the inside rather than having an outburst all the time. It's a lot of strength in a person who. Um, 
who can carry their burdens and process it. And so do not feel that because you shed many tears. A lot of the tears that we're shedding, it's not necessarily all our own tears. Some of this is us being able to process for the collective that we're able to process these emotions. And another friend of mine, we were having a discussion about sometimes when you see a tree or you see a color or you see, you know, and you get so emotional about it that you think it's something wrong with you, but it's not. You are here for a reason. You serve a purpose and you're like a energy tower. You're like a pillar of strength. You're a pillar of light for this um, dimension that we're in. And you're doing a lot of work in your sleep, in your daydreams, in your waking hours, more work than you think. So just do not be so hard on yourself, but just understand that you are a champion and you're beautiful and that you're doing a lot of work and just give yourself room to be sad and room to process emotions and room to give yourself a hug and give yourself love and know that you are a light bigger than what you think bigger than what you know affecting more in this atmosphere than you even really understand Mm-hmm. Yes. And the little joke. Namaste. Nah, I'ma stay. <laughs> yeah. That's good. I don't know. Jax, did you want to throw anything on the recording? You don't have to be seen, but if you did want to add something. No, I think what you said summed it up. All right, the container will be closed and I will stop the recording. <laughs>